Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another video lecture by Kami Microbiologist. Today, in this video lecture, we are going to talk about DLC test. We also call that differential leukocyte count. Now, what is differential leukocyte count? In the previous video, if you guys remember, we talked about a total leukocyte count. In total leukocyte count, we just talked that when we count all the WBC cells, we call that total leukocyte count. In this case, when we count uh, different WBC like neutrophil, basophil, like we have neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil, monocyte, lymphocytes. So whenever we count uh, these of uh, these cells uh, one by one and their numbers in in the whole blood, uh, we call that a uh, differential leukocyte count. Uh, second point says that uh, mostly in differential leukocyte count, what we focus, we mostly focus the percentage of each cell respectively. Then we have the purpose of a differential leukocyte count. The main purpose that why we perform this test for what what are the uh, why the doctor recommend this test? Uh, the main purpose of this test is to find out the internal infection inside our body or the inflammation inside the body. This test is also performed when our CBC report, which we perform on hematology uh, analyzer, if the CBC report is abnormal, so then after that we have to perform this differential leukocyte count this differential leukocyte count uh, is also performed uh, to detect uh, the blood disorder as well as bone marrow disorder di or diseases it is also used to de uh, to determine or monitor the cancer treatment for example if we treat the cancer using a radiotherapy or chemotherapy technique uh, so due to this way what happened the cancer cell are you know uh, eliminated or destroyed uh, to see that whether the chemotherapy or radiotherapy are working or not uh, or not so we also perform the uh, dlc because in dlc we will e easily see the leukemia cells uh, or the number of the uh, uh, different leukocytes then it is also used to, to find out the immature form of the white blood cell immature form of the neutrophil basophil eosinophil lymphocyte monocytes uh, that can cause uh, anemia leukemia and infection okay now let's see that uh, the function of different leukocytes uh, as all of you better know that we have five types of the leukocytes uh, we have uh, neutrophil monocyte uh, basophil eosinophil lymphocytes uh, all these are the uh, types of uh, uh, wbc uh, we have neutrophil and monocyte. Neutrophil are the granulocytes, means they have granules uh, and they have uh, uh, three lobes nucleus. Uh, and uh, uh, then we have monocytes. So monocytes are the A granulocyte. They do not have the granules and it have a very large nucleus uh, that can occupy the whole area of the cell. Now, what are the function of these both of the cells? The main function is to engulf the bacteria or uh, any microorganism or foreign organism and to eliminate the infection the second uh, cell we have basophil mostly the basophil is not present in the white blood cell uh, or, or we can say it's a very less number uh, of the basophil normally in white blood cell but what are the main function of these cells uh, this cells is actually producing a kinds of enzyme uh, which are specially responsible in a allergic reaction and asthma type of reaction then basophil is actually again this is what this is the granulocytes it have the granules and uh, it can you know occupy they have also uh, we can say uh, bean like nucleus their nucleus is actually present behind the uh, granules so we can say granules actually hide the nucleus of the basophil then we have eosinophil uh, eosinophils is actually spectator uh, have they have spectator like nucleus uh, and it is also the granulocytes as well now the main function of eosinophils that they are mostly responsible uh, in inflammation uh, reaction and it is also responsible in warm infection as well as in allergic reactions <coughs> then we have uh, lymphocytes uh, so lymphocytes we have three types of the cells that are found in lymphocytes these are the b lymphocyte t lymphocyte which we call a b cell t cell and natural killer cells uh, the main function of the b cell is to produce antibody that destroy the pathogens uh, t cells or we call that uh, t lymphocytes uh, that destroy the mm, that destroy the infected cell or tumor cells uh, 
then we have natural killer cells so natural killer cells have the same function but they mostly infected or they mostly kill the antibody medi uh, antibody containing cells uh, and they also kill the uh, we can say uh, cancer cells uh, and they also kill the infected cell as well then we have the parameters means uh, how many things are present uh, or how many things we can see in the differential leukocyte count how many things we find out in the differential leukocyte counts so there are almost 10 uh, parameters of the dlc we have neutrophil we have basophil eosinophil monocyte lymphocytes uh, we have also absolute neutrophil count basophil count eosinophil count monocyte and lymphocytes uh, now these are the most uh, important parameters of the dlc and in dlc we mostly find out these things uh, okay now let's see the requirement of the DLC means what we need uh, when we perform the DLC. So in DLC we mostly need uh, blood that is present in the editate tube. The blood which is present in editate tube. We have white blood cell piper. If you guys remember we already talked uh, that uh, how to find the TLC. So the same procedure uh, means if we want to find out the DLC. So we have the same procedure as we talked in the TLC. If you miss the TLC video lecture, so I will recommend you that must go back to my channel and watch that how we can find the TLC. So if you get idea about the TLC, so uh, DLC will be very easy for you. Because in the TLC, the same things we need. We need a uh, white blood cell pipe, but we need a uh, white blood cell dilution fluid. We need microscope, uh, Lashman stain. Not only Lashman stain, we also need Gemsa stain as well. We also need uh, slides as you can see and we need... Uh, hemocytometer slide as well or new birth chamber as well now it means uh, that we have actually two uh, methods to find out the dlc one method we call that uh, simple uh, slide method the other method we call that a hemocytometer or new birth chamber method first of all let's see the simple slide method now what we will do first of all we have to uh, you know take a slide on the slide we put the blood drop as we talked in the TLC and once we put the blood drop so then what we will do we have to put, we have to take another slide and we'll put it on the surf on the uh, surface of this uh, first slide as you can see now once we take it so then what we will do after that we have to you know uh, push the slide at backward position uh, to just touch the blood as you can see once the blood is touched and the blood is spread as you can see on the slide so what we will do we have to push it into forward direction as you can see so once we put it into the forward direction what we get we get a structure like that this is called blood film or blood smear okay now once we make the blood film or blood smear we will get the blood film in this form the blood film is actually contain three portion this is the head portion this is the body portion and this is the tail portion okay mostly we count uh, the DLC or different leukocyte we count at that tail portion not at the head portion and at the body portion because at that two position the cells are uh, you know placing with each other and they are placing one above to each other so it is really difficult to kind uh, to count the cell at the uh, head and uh, the body position but at the tail position you will found the cell now once we make the blood uh, film after that this blood film should be you know stained using Leshman or Gemsa once we stain it, uh, once when the slide is covered with gems or Lashman, so then we we let it for almost uh, two to five minutes. After two to five minutes, we have to wash it uh, under slow uh, running tap water. Uh, now after that, what we get? We get the s slides like in this one. But before that, uh, this slide should be air dry. Okay. Once it is air dry or using the tissue paper, we should we we dry it. Now once the slide dries, so we get the slides in this position or this is called the blood film. Remember guys, blood film should not be very thin, not be very thick. And we have to focus on that area. That area especially, uh, you know, through this area we can easily watch the cells. Now once we get this uh, blood film, so what we will do, we have to put uh, wooden oil at that uh, whole area. No, especially at that area we have to put wooden oil. After that what we will do, 
we will put the slide under the light microscope and will you know uh, take 40x lens so with 40x length what what we will see we just uh, uh, focus the uh, just all the cell we will focus now once the focusing has done so then we use 100x power due to 100x power what we will see we will see all the cells as you can see now we already talked it in the TLC so as you can see these are what these are the eosinophil these are the neutrophil these are the basophil monocyte sorry lymphocyte monocyte now all these as you can see this one this one these all these are called what all these are called red blood cell and this small as you can see this small is called platelet so platelet cells are really small as compared to white blood cell and red blood cell uh, uh, among these cells we have white blood cell that are larger now let's see that uh, how we will do uh, the uh, hemocytometer slide method to find out the DLC first we have to wrap the finger as you can see as we talked in the previous video once we wrap the finger means at that area we are the capillary uh, rich capillary area so uh, these are the rich capillary area so we have to wrap it as you can see once this process is done so then what we will do we prick the finger using sterilized needle now after that the blood will come out as you can see now this blood should be you know sucked using white blood cell pipette up to the mark of 0 0.5 after that we have to dilute it using uh, WBC dilution fluid as you can see now once it is uh, it should be take uh, until the bulb area is this is the bulb area is filled now it is uh, diluted so uh, after that what we will do we have to mix it by wrapping this uh, uh, diluted uh, this WBC pipette after that what we will do we have to load this uh, uh, means this solution mixing solution uh, or this uh, WBC diluted WBC into the uh, into the, this hemocytometer slider but before that we have to put first uh, the slides as you can see cover slip sorry first the cover slip is put it after that uh, between the cover slip and the surface of the slide uh, this uh, uh, WBC pipette uh, you know the uh, the point of the WBC pipette is put it and then it should be you know released slowly so once the f uh, solution are released slowly so what happened the we get the structure like that after that we have to count the WBC now under the light microscope what we will found we will found a square boxes as you can see these are the square boxes okay in uh, hemocytometer slider so these are the hemocytometer slide and hemocytometer slide these are the square that we mostly found in the slide now that area as you can see these are the area where we f uh, just uh, find out the WBC these are the WBC area so here we count the WBC these are the area where the red blood cell and platelets are found so red uh, platelets and uh, red blood cell are counted at that area okay so we have to count the white blood cell at that particular area as we talked in the previous video now here the question arises that how we can calculate the different leukocyte count for that purpose we have to make a box as you can see on the computer screen and this box contain uh, 100 uh, uh, squares as you can see these are the 100 squares now what you will do first of all you have to count let's suppose uh, this is the let's suppose these are the uh, means under the microscope you found uh, this field so when you found uh, neutrophils so what you will write in the box you will write n when you see eosinophil then in the box you will write E similarly basophil you will write B monocyte you will write M lymphocyte you will write L and so on and you will write these uh, uh, means uh, or you, you have to write all these uh, cells names uh, with the symbol letters as you can see uh, until and unless the it is uh, you know uh, till 200 boxes you have to write till 200 boxes once you write uh, 100 uh, uh, once you fill all the boxes uh, 
with the name of uh, white blood cells I mean with the name of uh, uh, different leukocytes so after that what you will do you will have to count it for example these are the neutrophils so n means neutrophil so you have to count it now what uh, how many neutrophil get we get 65 neutrophil so this is how we can calculate the uh, differential leukocytes then you have to count basophil normally basophils is one or it is sometime not present then we have eosinophil which is three then we have monocyte which is four cells we have lymphocyte 28 cells now we have to count it and what we get we get 100 differential leukocytes okay this is how we can find out the differential leukocyte count now in the new birth chamber how we can calculate it uh, okay so this is how we can find out the tls uh, the dlc uh, using new birth chamber and a hemocytometer now how we will find out the absolute count of the wbc to find out the absolute count of the or calculate the absolute count of the wbc it means uh, what first of all what does ab uh, absolute count of wbc means absolute count of wbc means the exact number of uh, different uh, leukocytes uh, in the whole blood cells okay for example we have neutrophil so when we count the neutrophil in the whole cells uh, and we multiply it with 100 and then divide it with tlc then we get a number of neutrophil this is called this is called absolute count of the neutrophil so once the uh, simple counting of the cell uh, differential leukocyte is done then the second step is the absolute count of the uh, leukocytes mostly this steps is neglected and mostly this is not performed in the laboratory but in some critical condition we mostly count it okay but it is not counted okay now uh, if we see the absolute count of the neutrophil so we have uh, this is the absolute count of the neutrophil 3000 to 6000 per microliter per microliter of the blood these are the 1500 to 2700 of the lymphocytes then we have eosinophil 150 to 450 we have uh, monocyte 200 to 600 and basophil is 100 so these are all the normal value of absolute uh, value of what uh, leukocytes then we have different types of diseases that are happening let's suppose if we get the dlc low so then what type of disease we have if the dlc is high what type of disease we have so we already talked it in the pathological variation if you guys remember you can go back to my channel and watch the pathological variation we already talked it but let me again explain in this video as well so we have first of all neutrophil so remember guys when the neutrophil amount is high we call that neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis it means the increased number of the neutrophil in wbc so what type of uh, diseases we have in the uh, high number of neutrophil count so in high number of neutrophil we have uh, acute infection metabolic disorder injection of the foreign protein due to which the neutrophil amount is high Vex due to vaccine it can get high due to poisonous by some chemicals drugs like uh, lead and mercury chempor benzene derivatives etc we have poisonous by insect we know we are uh, after acute hemorrhages the neutrophil may also increasing now on what condition the neutrophils are decreases means uh, decrease of neutrophil is called neutropenia okay so at the condition of the bone marrow disorder tuberculosis typhoid and autoimmune diseases the neutrophil count will be decreases then we have eosinophilia means a high number of eosinophil we call it eosinophilia now on what condition the eosinophil will be high in the reaction in, in allergic reaction like asthma in the blood parasitism like malaria or uh, uh, filariasis uh, uh, intestinal parasitism and scleric fever at that condition the neutrophil uh, the number will be increasing then eosinophilia means uh, decreased number of the eosinophil count now on what condition the eosinophil uh, decreases so we have uh, Cushing syndrome bacterial infection stress prolonged administration of the drug like steroid uh, acth uh, epinephrine 
Now then we have basophilia means a high number of the basophil so in which condition the basophilia arises during smallpox uh, disease chickenpox disease and polycythemia varia okay on that condition the new basophila decreases on what condition the basophila decreases we call it basophenia so it will be decreases uh, during a uh, skin disorder which we call that uh, arthesiria in uh, in stress condition prolong exposure to chemotherapy or radiotherapy the basophil are decreases then we have uh, monocytosis means uh, high number of the monocyte which will be increases in case of tuberculosis syphilis malaria and kalazar then we have monocytopenia in which the monocyte number are decreases so it will be decreases uh, due to prolong use of the pre dinocene means immunosuppressant steroid then we have lymphocytosis in which the lymphocytes are increases it will be increases in the condition of diphtheria hepatitis infection mumps malnutrition rickettsia syphilis syphilis we have thyrotoxicosis tuberculosis then we have lymphocytopenia means a decreased number of the lymphocytes so it will be decreases in the condition of aids cancer of lymphatic system we call it hodgkins disease malnutrition radiotherapy or steroid administration so these are the main condition due to which the dlc are increases and decreases so that's all about the dlc their count their methods purposes and each and everything their calculation i hope you guys get idea about that thanks for watching